All right, this is Cabin Conversations, a weekly podcast here at Woodland Church. I'm Dave Bonison here with co-host Whitney Swenson. Hi, Dave. Hi, Whitney. How are you doing? Good. Good? Fantastic. Monday morning. Yeah. Busy week coming up. Full it week. is. Good Full things. week. Lots of things going on. We're here with our very special guest. Very special. Hey-o. Right, Colton yes. Key. Glad to be here. Who's coffeeed up, prepped up, I've ready to go. I've got more to go, so I'll That's keep good. sipping on it as we talk. Yeah. Just slurp into the... <laughs> <laughs> in <that> microphone. <laughs> so there's rhythms and patterns like you have to learn how to do certain things yep. um i have the advantage of it doesn't show up on our our video but the actual board so if i have to sneeze i actually mute myself before i sneeze you oh. do. so yeah you could like wave your hand <laughs> yes. you sneeze, like, so so clever. <laughs> i'll try to mute you in all time. the control <laughs> over there in um, dave's hands yeah but then i also have you know you turn away and stuff because you yeah. don't want to yeah. get it in someone sneeze else's into, mic into yeah. this mic mm. wouldn't would that be nice soak up all of the Stop. Yeah, you get the benefit oh. too of that <laughs> coming your way. Is this all part of the podcast? This is this is very. I love it. So I love it. These are things we have to learn and rhythms and patterns. Yeah. Though I, I will. Um, we can do hand signals. Like, what is a sneeze? You know, when I used to, we used to like um, baby signs. We could do baby signs. Ah. Well, when we were like tubing, we were tubers and skiers, and when you're on the tube, you can't be like go faster. There's nobody's gonna hear mm-hmm. you. So faster, you slower. Signs. Keep going around. Yeah. Doc. Th- but this makes it weird now with all the cameras. Yeah, they, yeah, they're going to catch you. Yeah, they're going to catch you. They're going to know a sneeze is coming. Yeah. So, yep. But we still don't know <laughs> what percentage of people watch. I mean, we could tell you what watches versus YouTube versus other things, but not who actually watches. I watch it you every watch, week. Which is you? Yeah, it's so actually gotten me more engaged in the podcast. That's awesome. Okay. Yeah, we'll that's talk. Where I know I know your your intro question, so we'll We're wait coming. for your intro question. But yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, let's do it. Let's yeah. talk do you, about it. Do you, okay, hang on. You watch it like you're engaged in watching it or you're doing something else? And I am engaged it? in watching Are it. Are you really? Yeah. Cool. I, don't, I, I, don't know, I don't know why that's just like... Something you yeah. do. Yeah, that's what you do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just so what I do. You spend your, your Thursday morning? Thursday morning. Yeah, Thursday morning my, with yeah, us. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's great. Do you so. listen to it on one speed or two? I listen to it in normal speed. <laughs> you do. I've joked with you guys before <laughs> that I speed you up to try to get through the process, but I'm really only joking. I like listening to you all. Hey. So. Okay. Hey, this is- You're this our is, favorite guest. Yay. <laughs> warm, warm fuzzies. Sip my coffee. I don't know that we've had a guest on yet who has been a listener recently. Oh right! So, They're always like, you know, "What's the new? What's the new segment?" Yeah, yeah. So, and some of the the you know MLT and stuff will listen on occasion. I'm not trying yeah. to throw them under the bus or anything like that, but um, to to habitually include us as part of your week. That's so uh, sweet. <laughs> yep. Every Thursday morning. <laughs> well, good. Hey, so yeah. morning, beautiful. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know what's up then. <laughs> Thank you, beautiful. Um, yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> so share share some of your morning routine. Yeah, so so my my Monday through Fridays are very very similar. Uh, I wake up tr- at between six and six thirty. Try to get up before the kids. If you know me at all, and you know my family at all, Kayla's already gone at that point. Yeah. She wakes up at four. Uh, leaves a little before five to oh, get to, to Oxford. What time um, does she go to bed? She goes to bed around the same time as I do. We we're usually we're usually um, we get the kids in bed around eight thirty nine o'clock, and then we're in bed like right after that. And mm-hmm. it doesn't mean we're falling asleep. Sometimes we're watching something on TV or something. But like between nine and ten. Mm-hmm. But she gets like two less <laughs> hours of sleep <laughs> than yeah. you do every night. Yeah, yeah. So nine yeah. and ten, and then to four. So like six hours, six mm-hmm. to seven hours of sleep. Yeah, so, I shoot for seven, so that's I mean within that. I like but. I like my eight hours, but mm-hmm. yeah, mm-hmm. I get it sometimes. So yeah, I wake up between six and six thirty. I try to sneak past the kids' rooms, hoping that they don't wake up, and then I spend about an hour sipping coffee and either bouncing between. So Mondays are usually rewatching the message from Sunday. Mm-hmm. Uh, I usually the other days I'm in Woodlands in the Word, mm-hmm. and then Thursdays I'm. I'm watching you guys. And then outside of that time and that hour is is burner time. I'm on Facebook or Instagram mm-hmm. or watching other YouTube videos. Texting like memes. To texting, the MLT. <laughs> texting memes to the MLT. Yeah, I probably wake y'all up. That's yeah. okay. <laughs> I had I had one, but I couldn't figure out how to share it via text. And I'm like, how does Colton do this? <laughs> I'll show you. Yeah, okay. I'll make I'm you a sure pro. I'll that make you a happen, pro. But... <laughs> um, so for anyone who doesn't know, MLT is ministry lead team. And it's a team of kind of people leading in different ministries that meet regularly. And and Colton, you have changed the the culture of that team in that you like to. Text it's about funny fun, man. Yeah, you you like to it's, have it's, fun. when I first got here, it was always business, and so we would always message each other like like once every month about whatever you know business thing. Usually, usually I'm like, a 
care uh, crisis, yeah, right? Yeah, like yeah, someone's like, in the yeah. hospital or something like that. Yeah, moving forward, we're not going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, yeah, intermit, yeah. Intermit you're all just going to have to learn to ignore me or engage with me. So, <laughs> and what's going to happen is almost everyone's ignoring, like it's just going to be, <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be my, just a conversation with myself for like years. <laughs> all the fun. I'm okay with that. You can know that I'm watching and laughing on the other end Good. and have, Good. have process responses, but probably got lost in the response <laughs> and send before I got like came back to it and so then the care response comes in yep and then, I'm and then like, it's oh, like seri- something serious <laughs> that comment that I made doesn't ma- doesn't work anymore I'm not gonna press send here I, I've Delete. also I've also been told on numerous occasions that the way I text and communicate with people is so like one small thought at a time like a lot of people yeah. all of their thoughts will happen in one text message yeah. and I'll send you like seven text messages in a minute yep. and they're all the individual thoughts within that minute and so it's never like one paragraph or whatever it's like three words you don't use words. line breaks in your yeah, text it's just messages like, you no know, it's just like it, yeah I send you a text as I think mm-hmm. and then I shoot it out and then I immediately think of something else and I tell you and it, it, yeah it annoys some of my friends but that's okay I'm here to annoy you <laughs> it's good to know it is good to know that when I have like when I come back and there's 20 text messages I know that there's 14 from Colton and yep. it's just going to be a real quick read. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll get through yep. it. It's fine. Th- those 14, <laughs> that, that was a minute of thought. So <laughs> I I have engaged in some of the tomfoolery in the text thread. And then mm-hmm. I feel like it's just you and I like joking back and That's forth. That's okay. With everybody let's observing. Teach, you're let's, providing so, funny for let's me. Teach the, like, okay. for let's humor. teach the so rest of us. Well. So, yeah. okay. We will, <laughs> we will draw out the fun uh, that happens through this. So um, one of the things that I really liked about what you were sharing about your morning routine, Colton, is how embedded in the church you are. Yes. Mm-hmm. Like you are, you are a local church guy. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I, I know that as we've talked a little bit about ministry outside of the local church, you, you just, your heartbeat for the local it church and the jam. local community. Yep. And that your spiritual growth, your spiritual maturity would be formed and shaped through engagement in this community. That's, yes. a, that's a really cool pattern that I think a lot of, it's easy to take for granted because mm-hmm. a lot of people are like, I'm going to do Sunday morning and then I'm going to take advantage of the wealth of parachurch or extra mm-hmm. church mm-hmm. or larger church, other church mm-hmm. stuff that's out there. And it's and not that you it, don't. And there's but, there's good in that too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But the, yeah, my, my world and, and I think my calling is the local church. And so when God assigns me to a place, um, I immerse myself in yeah, that place and, and in. pastorally in that place. Yeah. The mm-hmm. other beautiful part about that, and maybe it's intentional, maybe it's not, but since you're engaging locally, you're engaging with the message, you're engaging with the scripture that this body is, it's, you're not multiplying inputs. You're simplifying clarifying. and you get to, you're clarifying, simplifying, you get to marinate in the same thing for a while. Yep. And I feel like that is something I'm trying to learn how to do in my life. And I need that. Yeah. Like I need to marinate yeah. in the same thing for a long period yeah. of time. Like that's just the way I comprehend stuff. So, right. so it is somewhat intentional. <laughs> yeah, but the content, sure. the availability of content is just bonkers. Mm. And so you can chase that and you yep. can, like if I feel like I've been saying so many so often right now, shotgun approach where you can hit it uh-huh. all or you can just kind of focus and have a rifle. And there's a space for both of them, right? Mm-hmm. But that, that's just one of those, that's what stuck out to me. Yeah. There's a um, a beautiful reality too. Is as so John and I right now are like praying about and talking about sermon series for the next year, mm-hmm. and those conversations happen within the context of what does our local church need? Yeah, mm-hmm. like praying and and being in relation with people and getting to know the highs and the lows and the particular struggles of this community. That's something that senior pastors across the country are doing but they're doing it for their local community. And so often when you engage in other churches' messages, Mm -hmm. like those aren't messages for you. Mm -hmm. They're they're biblical messages that by God's grace have truth in them, but they're not not spirit designed in a unique way for you in the same way Mm -hmm. that our our messages by God's grace are. Yeah, Mm -hmm. yeah. And so deep diving into that is Mm -hmm. is really, that's that's special. Yeah. That's unique. Good on you. Cool. Oh, thanks. Yeah, that's uh, that's an encouragement Mm -hmm. um, in, in terms of that. So what do you guys do for breakfast? So, (laughs) yeah, so I am, I, I, so it's, it's me and the kids every morning. Uh, and Judah usually wakes, he usually wakes up. He interrupts my hour. Typically Mm -hmm. he usually beats Hadley to it, uh, and beats me to getting ready in the morning. So he'll wake up, uh, and he'll immediately run into our pantry and grab a granola bar. He likes, he'll, he'll do, he's very easy in the morning. Mm -hmm. He takes care of himself. Mm -hmm. Um, I usually make myself eggs and toast, uh, which bleeds into helping Hadley as well. So Hadley usually eats eggs with me or, or she's also wanting 
what Judah had. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and so I typic typically I make myself uh, breakfast right after we all get kind of ready and, and sure. ready to run out the door. And so, yeah, that's yeah. usually eggs and toast. I think people, people are going to handle breakfast and eggs. breakfast so differently. Mm -hmm. um, some people it's like super intense, like, like John, um, John and his family, <laughs> that was like a thing. Yep. Um, and then sometimes it's just a real, really casual, like, mm -hmm. let's just get it over with sort yep. of situation. So cool. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, hey, Does it let's change during the season. Is it always eggs and toast? For me, it's always, yeah, eggs okay. and toast. If I have time, there will be bacon, but that takes a little sure, longer. It does. And mm. so that, that, yeah, that's like the gourmet breakfast. For Saturday me. for me, we do pancakes and a pound of bacon. And honestly, I don't eat the pancakes. I just eat the bacon. Kayla, <laughs> I eat so, like, like three quarters so of the bacon. So on, on Saturdays, we'll do that sometimes where I'll do. I'll, I'll do the stuff that I usually do during the week and I'll make it make more for everyone else. And Kayla will do pancakes because the kids really like pancakes. And I, mm -hmm. I, I'm, I like pancakes, but I, I don't need them. Mm -hmm. And so usually I'm skipping yeah. on the pancakes. Can I as tell well. you the best parenting secret I ever learned? Best parenting secret. Oh, uh, here we go. Learned. Everyone tune in. Show note time. Yeah. Here we are. Whenever Judah expresses interest in making pancakes, let him sh like do let it. Let him man. make it. Like have, side He's, by side. And then all of a sudden it's just his. And then if you don't like pancakes, like I don't like pancakes, and they ask for pancakes, you can say, absolutely, go ahead and make them. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm free of making pancakes for the rest so, of my life. So you guys, <laughs> so, so, so you, you guys have been parenting a little longer than I have. Um, Judah is at this age now, and maybe this is like typical. So he's five, he's turning six next month. But like the past six months, he's really wanted to help yeah. in everything yeah. and yeah everything everywhere uh and so that, that's that's a good word like he uh -huh. he'll <laughs> he would be on top of that yep. he, it's not always helpful no but <laughs> it's, it's usually not yeah, kind, yeah. kindergarten first second grade helpers are kind of like what interns are in ministry <laughs> it's like they're more work they're beneficial it's good like it's it's long-term yeah. dividends yeah. but it, it's work to get there <laughs> I can't right you just made that i can't wait <laughs> i'm gonna send this to some of our past interns yeah. <laughs> no, but it's, you, I you, hear what you're saying. Yeah, you I do this too. mindset of like, hey, sweet, this is just yeah. help. And it's, mm -hmm. it's like, it's not. It's in order for it to be useful help, it has to take work and yeah. effort and energy. But if you can teach a kid how to clean a room, you can teach a kid how to vacuum a room. Like that's, mm -hmm. you got to teach that. Mm -hmm. But that's just this mindset too of like parenting is teaching. Yep. Uh, parenting is taking unformed kids and helping them learn who. And the dividends pay off yes. in the end. All of a sudden chores are shared and. Pancakes never have to be made by me again. That that's so sounds good. awesome. Yeah. So French good. toast is the other thing you can teach your kids how to make. And that that sometimes has like a, I feel like the mm, residuals of French toast are sometimes a little lower. Sure. Because you can make it like in one bowl and then mm -hmm. the toast sure. and then done rather than pancakes where sometimes you have leftovers and yep. batch and all that stuff. I don't know. Oh, we Maybe that's not true. Put them in the fridge and then put them in a toaster afterwards to heat yeah. them up. Yeah. Reheated, huh. reheated pancakes. Like we have some in our fridge yeah. right now. They were really good. Fresh, they looked really good. I didn't eat them. I had the bank bacon, <laughs> but I just don't know why you'd reheat them. So, do do you guys eat, like eating breakfast at different times of the day too? Like breakfast food? Mm. We have breakfast for dinner like once I a eat, week. We'll do that. I, yeah. I, yeah, I yep. eat, I eat, I'll eat breakfast for lunch sometimes for dinner. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yep. We breakfast have bake breakfast for dinner is like, a, like just a meal. Thief. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. um, because because mornings are tight and move yep. quickly, and so like to make a breakfast skillet in the morning is not going to happen. Yeah, it takes time. Yeah. So, so I was like, oh, let's do this for dinner. dinner. Mm -hmm. Yep. I do that all the time. Mm -hmm. Breakfast mm -hmm. food, though. Yum. Yum. Yep. So, <laughs> I'm with you. Yum. All right. Let's talk. Uh, About a courageous church. Yeah. Mm. Courageous About church. And that a whole. A courageous senior pastor that showed his plumbing cross section to the whole I was like, congregation. Okay. All right. So I was, I, was trying to re I was trying to remind myself this is the second time he's talked about doing community in a way like that in like the past three weeks. And I was trying to remember what the other example was. I think it was a missions trip he went on and he was, he oh, was yeah. yeah, I'm like, man, his his version of community is sort of scary to me. It's like him mm -hmm. watching somebody else deal with poop. So. <laughs> <laughs> it was just very life on life. Very <laughs> transparent, very, right? Tips you into that one, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. How much of community do I want to be at this point? <laughs> He's going to start calling you and you're like, you know well, what? Yeah, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Are we he, start, he starts a life just... group and he, and he asked me to join. I'm like, ah. Uh. <laughs> I'm not interested in that amount of community. So thanks. Oh, but, man. But it very much is life together, it right? Is. Um, mm -hmm. Which is kind of that, that vision of... Uh, you know, trusting the spirit and in, in guiding content for Sunday mornings, but also just saying we are people doing life in in togetherness, mm -hmm. um, which is so rich and so good. Mm -hmm. So, um, 
And the piece of that for John, like the piece that John has modeled that makes me a little uncomfortable, but also is so good is that it's there is it's a letting down of the guard a little bit. Like uh-huh. you can still do life on life. You can meet as a small group and not let down the guard. Yep. You know, like you can do be doing all the right things, checking all the right boxes and, and not actually let people in and see your cross section of the plumbing thing that's just yeah. gross and like smelly and you know. That also requires me as like the mom thinking about that scenario is walking through a house that we just moved into that we're not fully moved into yet. You know, there's probably boxes on, it's probably quite disheveled. Mine would be, I don't know if theirs might be completely organized. Well, you saw the painting picture. Sure, sure, sure. sure. Yeah. Um, So there's, that's the part of life too, of like coming in, you have to walk past all of our normal stuff. Like you're not just coming in the living room that we can set up to make look nice and neat and close that extra bedroom door where all the stuff goes. You know what I mean? Yep. It's like, you're coming through and dragging yourself through my whole house to yeah. get to the basement and that's the real, yeah. You know, it's which yeah. that's letting somebody into your house and seeing how you live. <laughs> there's another section. There's another part of like letting them into your heart and seeing what happens. Who you there. are, mm-hmm. yeah, yep. So, so like all things, there's hard intentions that have to be processed, but there is probably a spiritual discipline element to not cleaning your house before people come over. Ooh, right. For, this is this is a test for my wife. For some people, this is a test for my wife. For some people, this isn't this isn't a thing, and this isn't like uh, there's no like absolute law about this. But for it's probably good to to say, am I trying to show not real life mm. in how I present that's, m- my day to day home a great when I'm inviting people over? Mm-hmm. And there might be a intentional letting. So, so you say, okay, it's a letting down walls. Well, how do we do that? Well, you take steps courageously Mm -hmm. in the context of community. And Mm -hmm. you say, hey, we're going to invite these people over for dinner and I'm not going to clean up my house. Mm -hmm. And I'm also not going to apologize for it. Mm -hmm. I might explain (laughs) it. I might say, hey, this is crazy because this is what's going on. Or people live here. Yeah, this is is real life. And I'm now inviting you into real life instead of whitewashed life Mm. or tidied life. Um, So I'm going to not clean, not apologize, and I'm going to fight to not stress about this. Mm. That, that's an intentional. Yeah. Those are intentional steps to letting down walls. Wait, just um, just off off the hip, would you do that well? Oh yeah, I would. I too. would have zero issue with yeah. that. Yeah, and I would have heart palpitations. Would you the whole time? But there's also so it's it's you asked a question, and I was going to say another question is, um, like, not am I going to let people in and see this? Is that letting the bar down? But also, like, am I going to let? the fact that my house isn't perfect, hold me back from hospitality. Am yes. I not going to invite you in for dinner because my house isn't ready yet? Yeah. I haven't yet. So there's the answer, right? Yeah. Like um, there's that piece too. And I have felt that. I grew up in a house that was like spick and span all the time. And so mm-hmm. I carried that into adulthood of like, oh, this is how houses are. Yeah. And then I lived in it. And I have like, I love my husband, but he's a little bit of a tornado. Mm. And we created a tornado in Sophie. And so yeah. I live with two tornadoes and then like the pickup crew. And you're orderly. Yeah. Right? So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so, and when I look at my parents now, they're like so much more makes sense. They're both like a little bit perfectionist, mm. like want things orderly. And so they help each other to the point of like, if you set your coffee mug down when you're with my dad and it's past like nine o'clock, it will disappear. Like do not He'll leave it unattended for more than a minute. Yeah. Because you're not going to find it. Yep. It'll be in the dishwasher. And yeah. <laughs> So that's funny. It's just, but, but I have felt that hold me back from using my home that God has given us to be hospitable to people. Yeah. That's a heart trip up that needs to change. Do you, hmm. I mean, just meals together, mm-hmm. regular meals. It, that's a kind of a bygone era situation feel, which shouldn't be in any way, shape or form. Nobody would say that it is, Sure, but it just, the, the pace of my life, the, the amount of families I've been invited mm-hmm. over to. The amount of people I've invited over, my wife and I talk all the time about being hospitable and mm-hmm. invite people over n- never. Mm-hmm. Um, and this p- pace of life and craziness and all that stuff. But I think it's also probably just, uh, are we doing life shoulder to shoulder, mm-hmm. you know, with people or or are we trying to put up some of these facades? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not like, in a negative uh, way. But yeah. Mm-hmm. In a negative way. Unspoken mm-hmm. expectations. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Quiet stuff. There's There's a lot to wrestle with that. Too, That's, you know, like because there's you're an extrovert. You, yes, you'd recharge with people. Yes, and I will, I will for a minute and or two or three days, and then after two or three days, it's like, <laughs> whoo, just give me space. I need a break. I need from... I'm an introvert that recharges alone. Mm-hmm. So, so there's that to play with too. Yes. That there is that there's margin in, in space of life. What are you using margin for? You can use it to scroll and like you know 
probably not be refilled, or you could use it in a refilling way. There's a lot to wrestle with. Yeah. And that's why I think we started this whole thing by saying, like, this is hard intentions yeah. and it's worth processing. It's not yeah. a hard and fast rule. Yeah. Um, but it's probably a good way to lean in to some of those things. It comes down to, like, why? Why do you mm-hmm. need that? Mm-hmm. Why, is that so, why is that a priority for you? Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah. yeah. That's a good question to ask. All kind of under the um, umbrella question that John had of everybody, everybody's courage or courageous act is going to look a little different. Yeah. And mm-hmm. that was a helpful framing. I think it was so good. For, he was saying for some people, it's showing up at church. Yeah. And that might be season, you know, not just seasons, but like years and years yeah. of like the, the act. And, and there might even be acts before that. Like, it's like my, my act of courage is, yeah, it can look so different. Yep. And that's where giving grace to people mm-hmm. in terms of what they're walking through. And, and I'm not saying you struggle with this, but even walking through the door with you yesterday into into first service, yeah. and you're like, hey, can I sit with you guys? Absolutely, you can sit with the Swenson family. But then I got to thinking about your wife that comes in mm-hmm. and sits. Sometimes you're engaged in service. You're always engaged in service. Your wife comes in. Mm-hmm. And to come in and sit by yourself mm-hmm. is an act of courage. Yeah, Good it's, gravy. In a new community, in a mm-hmm. new church, in a new local church that you feel called to and assigned to and— Yet don't have a ton of roots yet. Yeah. I mean, you're you're a year in, so yep. you're they're growing, but yep. it's been That's a year for that. On already. point. Yep. Mm-hmm. Single parenting church situation is that was. I I mean, I, I think I've talked about this before, but it was such a thing that I didn't acknowledge going into ministry. Mm. Um, was that going to church as a family was such a priority yeah. for me as a kid? And you lose that a little. You lose that when mm-hmm. you do ministry. Mm-hmm. Yep. I, I don't get to. Yep. Um, and that's a. That's a real sad loss. Mm-hmm. So it's something I guard for Christmas Eve. So I remember last year yeah. you asked me, you're like, hey, could you host? This would nope, be great. And not going like, to be there. <laughs> Absolutely not. No, Thanks. Um, <laughs> I'll just do the whole day by myself. You, know you did a great job, Colton. You did a really, really wonderful job. Thank you. <laughs> um, but some of those boundaries, I think, are, are just so important to find and then guard. Um, yep. And, and what that looks like. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think that'll, that'll continue to change for me. Um, we're doing a lot more Sunday morning classes. Mm-hmm. And I realized this last, you know, we just did Bible 101 at 1030, which is my regular attendance with my family hour. And I didn't realize the cost that that was. Yeah. You know, I was just like, sweet, second service. This is a great time to do it. Nope, it's um, not. We're, mm-hmm. We walked back and I'm like, I'm only doing 845 classes now because mm-hmm. my family doesn't attend that service. And mm-hmm. um, I can continue to attend that. And as my kids age out of Sunday kids, and start attending Sunday service. That's going to be all Open the more up important. capabilities. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, for me to be there. So, mm-hmm. um, I also just want to shout out, this is off the rails kind of, but not totally. Two weeks ago, was it like the strings were up on the stage? Yeah. And you and Kayla were sitting in front, like I, I sit in the back. Uh-huh. I was like, oh, Colin and Kayla get to sit here yeah. together the whole time. And this is incredible. The strings, that was an incredible was service. Cool. Mm-hmm. But that was really. Yeah, I think like. Thir- 13 people on stage. Yeah. yeah. And you were on so vacation. Good. And I was on vacation. But, well, yeah. there's a leave that in such a way that you can, that can happen. The yeah. incredible 13 people is more than typical. Yep. And it went off yeah. beautifully. Yeah. It was a beautiful day of yeah. worship. Ha- hats, I mean, hats off to, like, honestly, the team mm-hmm. and, and, and Devin and Stevie making mm-hmm. those things happen mm-hmm. while I'm gone too. Um, yeah. It's, it's cool to be able to step back and actually relax mm-hmm. and not have to go crazy about it. So was there any, do you have any ability to turn off the production assessment side of your brain? No. Isn't that awful? No. Yes. I, I, even, even when I'm not in my own environment, it's, it's hard. Like this is a Mm. typical tech and worship person's problem is we go into an environment where it's not even our own Mm -hmm. and we're being led to the throne Mm -hmm. and in the middle of being led to the throne, we're so distracted by Mm -hmm. anything and everything. Mm -hmm. And it's that, that's an us issue, but it is across the board. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I know the feeling. Just even production layout, like service layout stuff. Mm-hmm. I'll go to a conference and I'll be like, why didn't they switch that? Like they, yep. you know, I'm sitting pondering. Yep. Um, yeah, so. I remember listening to a Carrie Newhoff podcast with John Mark Comer when he was going off of, he was not going to be a senior pastor anymore. He's handing that off. And Carrie was talking about how he has been not a senior pastor for many years, maybe a decade, and how he that's still like a, something that he fights Mm-hmm. It's just something something you do so often for over and over and over again to rewind that. And yep, I was it, a, a few months ago. Uh, I'll call him out. It was it was Hannah's husband, Matt. Um, <laughs> I'm I'm uh, 
I walk into service and I think I was off. I may not have been off, but I was off schedule. Mm -hmm. And I walk in and I immediately realize, so we have this, the countdown video that mm -hmm. plays and something was going on with it. Like the, it was, we were in the five minute countdown, but the video wasn't playing. And I'm in the back of the auditorium and I immediately realize that. And I kind of whisper out loud to myself and Matt's right next to me. I was like in a conversation with him that something was going wrong with mm -hmm. that. And he looked at me, he's like, and nobody else is going to notice. And I was like, oh. That's right. That's a good word. <laughs> like, chill, out. chill out. Yeah, yeah. I, you're, I noticed. You're, yeah. I noticed. <laughs> yeah, I know so, you did. I was, no, I'm just Thanks kidding. for I'm being better. courageous, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but those are so, such those, helpful words. They are, right? I, and I need that. I, yeah, I, we need that. Yeah, mm -hmm. yep, and that's so. one of those things too. Like if you had kept that inside and not said it, nobody would have called you out. Yep. Because so often we probably keep some of those pieces. We don't process them or share them in the same way. Yep. So mm -hmm. that's a good way. Yeah. Word, word. like yeah. share your mm -hmm. stuff and then surround yourself with people who call you out on yep. your stuff. Mm -hmm. so, yep. Mm -hmm. Hey, I got to give a shout out to, um, to a book, uh, Living Like Monks, Praying Like Fools. Oh, um, I have it on my Kindle. Book. Yeah, so right you talked about Comer handing off Bridgetown, mm -hmm. the guy he handed off Bridgetown to Staten or something. Tyler. Mark, Tyler Staten. He wrote this book. He's written a couple books. Uh, he just came out with a new one that I'm really excited for. But Living Like Monks, Praying Like Fools is just so good. I just finished it. I've been reading it forever because sometimes that takes time. Um, but I just so appreciate it. So chapter nine of the book is just like, what do we do when God doesn't answer our prayers? Because he doesn't mm. often. Mm -hmm. And it was just really, really gut level honest, yeah. which I really appreciated. Yeah. Some really heavy uh, words. And then chapter 10, um, he kind of laid out this uh, this principle with prayer where he said people go through their Christian life and they, they just start getting stagnant in their prayer mm. life. And he's like, people think that that's related to doubt. He's like, I just think that that's related to maturity. Hmm. Because, and he uses this phrase that I, I'm just sitting in. He said, fidelity is boring. Yeah. Hmm. Like when it comes to marriage, like you kick off your marriage, honeymoon phase, everything's great. And you're, you're working towards the end of your marriage. But in between that is this long, I mean, it's, you know, Peterson uses the phrase, a long hmm. obedience in the same direction, mm -hmm. which is, it just gets dry sometimes. And he said the same thing happens in marriage mm -hmm. where in between the mountaintop experiences is the regular day-to-day -day life, which gets dull. Mm -hmm. And it's not doubt or insecurity that leads to that dullness. Sometimes it's just what regular life looks like. Fidelity is boring. And I'm sitting there like, wow, that really mm -hmm. resonates mm -hmm. and is challenging and is a call to persevere. Mm -hmm. It's not a call to shirk back or anything like that, but... Mm -hmm. Anyway, if you're looking for a book, Living Like Monks, Praying Like Fools, or maybe it's Praying Like Monks, Living Like Fools, it's... Nope. Living Like Monks, Praying Like Fools? Yep. Okay. I don't think we want to live like fools. No. I mean, we could. I think that's, that's oh, what maybe... We should be growing out of that. <laughs> Even more indignant. Not learning ourselves this. into it. Yeah. <laughs> Some may say it's foolishness. You know that? Oh, I do song. know that song. Nah, I do. nah, 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 nah. Hey. Not, not there with I'm you. I'm with but you. Are you really? You're really? jamming. That's fine. You don't, you don't know, know that song? Oh, well, man. Do will we, you sing it so I can understand it? Do we have... Hold, I will dance, I will sing to be mad for my king. Nothing, Lord, is hindering this passion in my soul. We have not had a jam session yet. We just did. Yeah. So, that's Woo. great. Well, No, I don't know that can we, uh Can we shout out January? Is that actually going to happen? Oh, boy. It's still February, February. 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 It's it's still tentative, but I'm I'm for it. So I'm let's, for it. I'm if for we it. do this. Let's do it. Let's do let, that song. We're making it undignified. Official. Let's do it. Undignified. Undignified. So what are we shouting out? That's Go what you it. were just singing. We've undignified. Yeah, undignified. Yeah. David Crowder. David Crowder, yep. Oh, okay. David Crowder band. Back in the day, so David Crowder. Oh. What, what do we got? What do we got? So, happening so we've 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 wrestled with the idea of doing a night of worship and not just mm -hmm. doing a night of worship, but doing like a like an old school night of worship. Throwback yeah, worship. Yeah, throwback what does worship. That mean? So so like nineties, early two thousands okay. range. So we we have to be very like definitive, like millennial old school. <laughs> yeah, right, right. This isn't I mean there's a lot Don't of good worship. Don't label it old school and then <laughs> yeah. have jeans Yeah, when we Swanstrom say old school, we're like, yeah, yeah, current, current like young adult, middle aged adult, sure. young old the, school. But. It's in the calendar right now, it's Y two K throwback worship. Yes. Oh. So, so right around the turn of the millennium, yep. those worship songs. I, I think this podcast is big enough that by us talking about it on the podcast, it has to happen. Okay. That's right. You heard so. it here. This podcast is I've just big assigned enough. myself some more work, but that's okay. <laughs> it's been on the schedule. It's been on the schedule has, for months. Yeah, because you went in and did it just off a random conversation we had outside of the offices. I put it in. I put it in the great communication across form. I did all the, all the stuff to get it to happen because yep. I— 
want it feel, to happen. I want to truly worship a god. <laughs> oh, god. <laughs> <can> only happen. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> With good old, like, mighty to save. Oh, let's go. Let's do it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's go. Mm-hmm. So, all you know that one? You know I that do one? know okay, that one. Okay, good. All right, there good. Was, I was probably starting to listen to Christian music 2004-ish. Okay. Undignified was probably right before that. It was so popular then, mm-hmm. but it was probably late 90s um, when it came out, I think. Mm-hmm. 2004. That, that was like yeah, that was like the, the height. Computer. That was like that was the beginning of the height of Hillsong. 2004 yep. through like to 2010. Oh man, all of those albums are yeah my jams. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. there was a 2002 was third day in mercy. Me 2002. Were we were close. The ones that yep. I started off with. Yep. Mm-hmm. But it was mighty. To, it was Hillsong. Mighty yep. To mighty to save. save. Yep. And then there was another one that was. I'm not gonna. Some I'll other send great it to Hillsong. You later. Yep. I know so send it to me later. Songs. Yep. On via text, but I don't know how to so send good. Instagram reels. <laughs> so, so good. Uh, so courageous. courageous. Yeah, the courageous church. I, I have. So. I, I know you guys probably have like routes that you want to go in this, no, but there is there is something that hit me on Sunday that I just had to process, and now I get to process it with you guys. So so courage comes from the Holy Spirit. He immediately said that. I was like, that is true. Mm-hmm. But also, I have been really courageous in moments where I'm like, that is surely not spirit led courage. <laughs> 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 like I like like so what how do is how do you discern when it's when it's a spirit led courage and it's a ignorant led courage? Great question. Yeah. I'm, I'm interviewing do you, have you guys of now. When you've been, I'm just kidding. Oh <laughs> gosh, <laughs> <laughs> probably too long of a list. So so two things uh, that pop into my mind Great mm-hmm. immediately. Cool. Yeah, fantastic. Um, is that uh, his next point was if you lack courage, ask for it. Uh huh. And so there's a difference between like courage that comes in the moment of passion and courage that comes out of an intentional desire to walk in step with the spirit. That's a good, yeah. yeah. So uh-huh. the, there's, there's, I mean, there's going to be courage that comes in the moment because that's what Peter and John were, yeah. mm-hmm. were jamming to uh-huh. in that. I mean, um, Peter has examples of that in ignorance all throughout yeah. scripture. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> where, <laughs> where he just did dumb stuff, <laughs> do dumb stuff. Um, the other, the other big thing, just the discernment piece, is that courage from the Holy Spirit is always going to be in line with the fruit of the Spirit, mm-hmm. right? So it's always going to lead to, or produce, or yep. come out of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and yep. self control. Yep. So if those things, self control and courage. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's a, anyway, keep going. Mm-hmm. So I, I think if the, that's like, that's the metric. Is the spirit at work here? Is it producing or flowing from those nine characteristics? Yep. Um, I think that's probably a discerning piece. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. Um, Is there a, like a flesh example you can put some flesh on that <clears throat> help kind of. Uh, I mean, I think a great example is how we utilize social media mm. and, and how we. Hmm how we dive into conversations on that platform. Like yeah. I think I think to some capacity we should be courageous as believers on social media where it is like one of the main points of communication in the world right now. Sure. But also there's a line and there's mm-hmm. a fine line. Mm-hmm. And I know for myself, like I've crossed that line before mm-hmm. in courage, right? <laughs> so <laughs> and so yeah. I, I think I think that would be one example sure, that I think a example. lot of us kind of live in. Yeah. So uh yeah. There's that there's that meme out there with the two frogs where the the one says me about to post on a political <laughs> post on Facebook <laughs> and the other frog is like close in and it's like the Holy Spirit. <laughs> 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 it's like no. <laughs> no. I haven't seen that one, so, but I can I can yeah. yeah I'll send that to yeah, you. Yeah, send it to point. me. So uh-huh. I'll just send it to the MLT. <laughs> Yeah, we're gonna change it to Colt- go. Colton about to post his <laughs> political post. I think too, like the so John talked about. We looked at Peter's failure uh-huh. and talked about uh, courage doesn't come from past, feel, like from failing that was in the so past. Good. You know, that like was so good. That is, it's something that um, yes, it comes from the Holy Spirit, but it's also just not dependent on your past failings. But also within that, he talked about we grow as we practice, mm-hmm. and so you're practicing, and you're like, I don't, I'm not want to give license to just be like a numbskull on social media. That's not the, what we're talking about here. We're talking about growing as you practice. So so when you do cross the line because you're courageous, how do you handle that then? Do you, yeah. you know, like, can you still cross the line and then be like, ooh, this was actually, can you publicly say, this was actually too far. I'm sorry for this. You know, mm-hmm. I apologize. Forgive me. And learn from that and yeah. move forward. Because um, I, I think, yeah, there's still that fine line. You're still on a razor edge sometimes of, is this spirit led or is this mm-hmm. my courageous heart? 
Yeah. It's the, lit up. The phrase was, phrase was courage doesn't depend on my past failings. We can let the past we can let the past be the narrative for who we are or we can courageously step forward. And so that's like exactly what you're saying. An apology and redoing it even mm-hmm. after a failure mm-hmm. can still be courageous. Um which is, and which is a great word. Christ like, right? Like I'm, he never had to apologize. <clears throat> But uh, he gives us the ability to say, "Ooh, that's my identity is not hinged on how well I just performed yeah. on this stage. Mm. My identity is rooted in who he is, so I can say I made a mistake here and still be okay." Yeah. Um. So, yeah, a good question. Mm-hmm. Social media. I, just, I just, social, just social media. I am the I'm the like old curmudgeon that like. Can I just DM you and talk about this in person? I love social media. <laughs> I, <know So>. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I personally think that the opportunity for misunderstanding is so great. Absolutely. And the, 100%. the temptation to shorten your answer so that it's readable, but then it gets misunderstood is yep. so high yeah. that it's just hard to, it's easy to do mic droppy things. And mm-hmm. hard to like have a nuanced conversation. It is. It so. is. Yeah. Mo- most nuanced conversations should be taking place face to face. I would agree for mm-hmm. sure. There's that piece of like, I, I, this could be way off. I could be wrong. But there's that thing of like when you're looking somebody in the eyeballs, you're looking at the Imago Day. And when you're looking at a screen, it's not there. It's not there. And yeah. so how much easier is it to tear down up somebody? Yeah. Yep. And so maybe that's self-control for me and you are a better in self control in that, and so you can engage in that way Maybe. and be a, and be a, a light in a in a. And you're right; it is a way that yeah. the world is interacting right now. Yeah. And so to to step out of that step is also against what how I feel we engage. We're mm-hmm. called to be a part of the world in it, not of it, but in it. Mm-hmm. Um, so that there's a courageous way to engage. There's a wise way to engage. Too. Wise, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. That's good. Cur- courage. Um, courage. And I'm excited for the church moving forward because mm-hmm. as I've talked to John over the last two months, like I see his a courageous eagerness mm-hmm. to dive into some issues yeah. that I think I think will force us as a congregation to live out our grace filled priority. Yeah, hundred percent. So that's probably an area where we need to continue just reinforcing that you know we are defined by a love of Jesus mm-hmm. and a submission to God's word and walking forward in that. And then how that plays out, like, let's be grace-filled yeah. as we move forward. Yeah, and if we're defined by a love of Jesus and how he is, who he is, then we're defined by love for people because that's who he was. And he mm. did them in some Ooh. very tight ways, right? Like, Are there, like, Whitney quotes on <laughs> this? Yeah, then, yeah. yeah. <laughs> But that, that gets the grace-filled thing, right? Like, like, I can receive grace from God when I mess up, but it is, it is an out-there experience. Yeah. It's not a, just me hold, holding up the grace as much as I can. Anyway, there we go. Let's practice right. grace-filled, being gracious with each other. And we can do that while we answered this random question. Here we go. We're there already. Right. We are Ooh. there. You need to have more jam sessions with Colton. <laughs> that makes it just fly. This uh, this should be a fairly easy, like it's just a snap, right or wrong. Like you'll be wrong or right, but um, there we go. So Chick-fil-A. Here's the, here's the spinner. Yeah. Did it spin? It. It's yeah. always me. <laughs> it's yeah. Colton. I, I've been on this podcast three times. I'm pretty sure all three times it's been me. Well, you, I you think, I think regular, that thing is rigged. Being a regular listener, you also know that it also is sometimes Whitney. Yeah. That is so. That is true. <laughs> yes. It was you last week, wasn't it? Was it? I think so. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. yeah. So it's clearly okay. fair. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you can check the settings. <laughs> It is not rigged. So. Guess is actually on there seventy five percent of the time, <laughs> and the other twenty five is Whitney. So, crazy how that happens. Bizarre. Um, oh. Easy question this week. What is your you, favorite? You premise easy all the time, and this then is, I'm like, this is just this is like, see. what is your favorite ice cream flavor and ice cream topping? Oh boy, uh, cookies and cream. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And I I would have at one time said chocolate or fudge as a topping. Mm-hmm. I've topping. I've really been into ca- like a like a like good caramel great option. So on cookies and cream. I, oh, boy. I would even I would even do that. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I Is mean, that too much it. flavor for you, dude? You had no. sushi last week with all sorts of flavors. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm all about Car- the flavors. Yeah. So. That was an experience. That was yeah. So we could have we could have had a whole podcast on that. So <laughs> that was a thing. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, no, 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 I'm, I'm all for that. Yeah. So caramel, you don't necessarily think of caramel with cookies and cream. No, you don't. It can go. But can you imagine a caramel cookie? Like 
Yeah, it would be good. You know? Yeah. That's, That's part of what I always think about with an ice cream flavor is can I envision this in cookie form? Oh. And then good to go. Yep. Okay. So I don't know why. I'm just mm-hmm. realizing that right now. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. That's an acceptable answer. Oh, that's to a great that, answer. To that very open-ended, you know, <laughs> opinion <laughs> question. <laughs> that's how we roll here. Oh, good, good. You good. have an acceptable opinion. <laughs> Good. So, <laughs> what's your favorite ice cream flavor? Um, so, Moose Tracks. If if yeah. I'm going like a quart, um, it's the double chocolate too. Like oh. the they're making more than Moose Track options. Well, it's so it's the chocolate ice cream with the chocolate fudge with the chocolate peanut butter little guys. Yeah, thingamajigs that are just yep. fantastic. Yeah. Um, I like some texture in my ice cream. Mm-hmm. Um, I like a variety. Oh man, there is a. Uh, Nobody will disagree with this, but King Cone is obviously the best ice cream in central Wisconsin. And they make a flavor. It's their like award winning. Fla- don't, don't even try me. Um, I'll, I'll stay. I'll, I'll submit. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're like award winning flavor. It has just great textures in it sure. that I just, I really like uh, some good texture. But, my, mm-hmm. my kids do like going there because they call it King Cone or King Kong Cone. King Kong. So, yeah. Cone. Yeah. My, uh, my son, we just put this. Nobody who listens to this actively talks to my son, except my mom. Mom, don't tell. I've been this. Um, <laughs> this is a secret. He, his favorite fast food place is King Burger, as he refers to Burger King. Uh-huh. Oh. And so we'll be yeah. getting yeah. him some King Burger apparel <laughs> nice. for Christmas. That's amazing. Because he just loves it. I love that. We saw someone with a Burger King shirt on. He was like, that's so cool. Okay. Like, okay. So, so while, while we're on the topic of ice cream, and I know we probably have to go soon, but have I, have any, either of you or listeners ever experienced Blue Bell? The brand, I believe so. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's, it's a it's southern, a southern thing, yeah, right? yeah, top notch. Where do you, you can't? Find I, it I cannot here. find it here anywhere. Mm-hmm. No. Well, maybe our uh, uh, listeners, where can we audience, find it? Let us know because so, I will, I will, tra- I will travel a little ways to get me some some bluebell, some bluebell. Blue blue I mean, so. it'll be melted by the time I got home, but it might also be eaten. So <laughs> yeah, just pack some dry ice. Yeah, situation. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll make it work. Easily accessible too. It is. There's a machinist shop in town that has dry ice available. Hey, yeah, so, and, so. we can make this work. Machinist shop is an easy accessible thing. <laughs> <laughs> It's a shop. It's they here. Sell. It's yeah. here. You can get it. Oh. You can get it. Again. Show notes. So, <laughs> this is where to find dry ice. Oh, so, man. Um, I, I will say, I, I think I've said this before, but if I'm going to Culver's, it's a vanilla concrete mixer with mini M&Ms and cookie dough. Okay. Huh. But then I try Sounds to good. invent ways to describe how much I want, which is like generally I just want enough custard to hold that together. Oh, so like, you want candy. I want so much candy. Um, so yeah. I'll be like, Which is usually disgusting. where they like jip you on. Like yeah. The, yeah, mm-hmm. the, yeah. Or they charge me like 14 times. But yeah. sometimes I'll communicate it in just a way. That's a lot. Yeah. A lot of candy. I'm, I'll tell them, I'm like, put as much as you think can physically be in there and then put more. <laughs> and just do that. Pretend so. it's Halloween and I'm a, I'm a kid dressed up for Halloween. It's, it's like, a give, lot. Me, give me my candy. It's, I've had a yeah. lot of fun. So what's your favorite ice cream flavor? I think cookies and cream. All right. But then, so the topping, really? the topping to me has to be on vanilla, like you're flavoring vanilla. And we have this incredible mix of cornflakes, maple syrup, and peanut butter. Peanut butter. That's it. Yeah. That's, that's the strange uh-huh. part to me. The other ones Corn make flakes, sense. maple syrup, and peanut butter. It's like a, it, hmm. it's got good texture. It's got excellent flavor. Do the cornflakes get soggy? You don't let it get that far. Yeah, you, yeah, you eat you, it quick. You make it and eat it. Yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah, following you. Yeah, you don't, you. You don't mix it up and you. put it back in the freezer. You mix it up and consume so it's like uh, so all of this with vanilla so you're making your own thing right now oh yeah we've should, talked about doing this if you this want idea. to put on five ten pounds just start eating it <laughs> i do <laughs> <laughs> it's winter time so. <laughs> this is time start to insulating it starts to insulate we've yeah. uh we've talked about doing a, a live podcast on a sunday morning oh yeah sort of thing but we also need to do um a like snacks with whitney podcast yeah, oh have, I'm, where we get some snacks. people you That's bring some that snacks should be a in thing. Yep. And then we evaluate whether it's a snack or dessert. <laughs> <laughs> kind of one of the, is one of the pieces. Is this tea or not tea? This is an ongoing kind of... conversation, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah oh, I thought much, so. Yeah. 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 So. Uh-huh. Yep. So anyway. Cookie dough. It was all came down to cookie dough. Is that a snack or dessert? What was your answer? She said you, it's a dessert. I, think, I say it's a snack. I, I, think it's, I think it's a dessert. I agree yeah, with you. Yeah, yeah, I know you would. Yep. <laughs> with Same that. favorite ice cream. <laughs> We're on the same wavelength. You're yeah. a different one. Yeah. This Sorry, is, Dave. This has been Cabin Conversations. <laughs> it's a weekly podcast here where we disagree. And, and we do so graciously. We do. We, oh, we yeah. love you guys. Film, so. yeah. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. <laughs>